This is Grumpy SEO Guy, episode 18, how to sell and how not to sell SEO. You're listening to Grumpy SEO Guy, the SEO podcast that doesn't waste your time with nonsense that doesn't work. I'm the Grumpy SEO Guy, and I'm sharing with you the strategies that have helped me successfully run my SEO agency for the last 14 years. In this podcast, I'll be sharing my knowledge and experience, discussing tips and strategies, and trying to help you cut through the confusion that permeates this industry. If you listen to this podcast, you will know more about SEO than 99% of people on the planet. Ready? Let's get started. I'm the Grumpy SEO Guy. Let me tell you why I'm grumpy today. I'm grumpy today because sales is challenging. And in this episode, I'm gonna start to talk to you a little bit about my experiences selling SEO. This is a long episode, so I wanna tell you exactly what we're gonna talk about. The first thing we're gonna talk about on this episode is how when I first began selling my SEO services and I had no clue how sales worked, I literally broke every sales rule there is and had incredible success doing it. The next thing we're gonna talk about is how, when I pivoted my agency from being just a backlink provider to being a full service SEO agency, and I started studying a formal sales system, I struggled immensely for over a year with closing sales. After that, we're gonna talk about why that was the case what exactly the problems were and what I did to fix it so that I don't encounter these difficulties anymore. The last thing we're gonna talk about and the most important thing we're gonna talk about are two actionable tips that you can take to improve your selling. And it doesn't matter in this particular case if you're selling SEO or not, this is applicable to literally anything. I'm gonna tell you exactly what you need to do so that you can be confident and relaxed in your sales meetings And I'm gonna tell you how to remove all traces of awkwardness from any interaction that you're having, including sales meetings. I cannot even stress enough how much this will help you. And it's applicable to your life. I'm not kidding when I tell you that when I learned this last concept that I'm gonna tell you about, my life improved immensely. And I think it's the kind of thing that once you understand it, certain things that maybe didn't used to make sense to you will make sense to you. Now, this isn't gonna be how to sell SEO because I know that some listeners out there are looking for a how to sell SEO episode, but we might do that one later, but that's not gonna be this. But I think that if you listen to this, you're gonna learn a lot both about how the SEO industry works and about sales. But before we do that, my lawyer tells me that I have to say this right now. A quick disclaimer before we get started, everything I say here is based on my experience and opinion from 14 years in the industry. I don't officially know how Google or any other search engines work. Everything I say here is hypothetical and based on my experience. This podcast does not constitute advice or services. What worked for me may or may not work for you. Okay, back to the show. Now, I want to start by saying I know that some of you listening to this are very good salespeople, okay? I am a very bad salesperson in most circumstances. And... What I found very curious was that when I started, I had incredible success and I had no clue what I was doing. And the more I tried and the more I learned about sales, the worse I did. And I'm gonna explain to you, okay, so I I actually think that I figured out what that was. Like I literally have been thinking about this for years. I'm, I'm not kidding. I've literally been thinking about this problem and why that is for years. And I've come up with a couple explanations and I, th- I think that both of them are right. So let me, just, let me just share with you, this is gonna be my experience over about 14 years of doing the sales side of stuff while running an agency, okay? So before I really begin getting into sales, let me kind of tell you, how I started my agency and how everything was working, okay? Because I wanna make sure that you understand exactly what was happening and why it was happening that way. So when I started, and this was back in 2009, 2010, okay? I got all of my business at first from a certain, we can call it an online marketplace, okay? Now, I'm not gonna say who it was because it doesn't matter, but if you think back to 2009, 2010, that, that time, there were about four big online marketplaces 
where there were a lot of people offering SEO services, okay? That's, that's vague, but also, I think, suggestive enough. Now, it's probably not the one that you're thinking of because there were like two really big ones and it wasn't one of those. It wasn't one of the two biggest ones, okay? But it was one of the big, one of the big marketplaces. So anyway, I started offering my services there. And I wanna be clear, I was doing backlink building, okay? I was doing 100% backlink building. I was providing backlinks to every client. And now, even today, when I have a full service SEO agency, that's still like 95% backlink building, okay? When you become a full service SEO agency, you can raise your prices by a lot, okay? But even when you're running a full service SEO agency, 95% of what you do, if you're getting results, is building backlinks, okay? So anyway, I'm just gonna leave it at that. So I started and I was a backlink provider and let's be honest, I'm still a backlink provider today, but it's a little bit, it's, it's, a, it's, it's been changed a little bit from how I used to do it. Anyways, so now I wanna share a couple things like all at the same time, because I think they're all related. Now, I wanna say, when I started, I was literally breaking every sales rule there is. And I didn't know, I look, I don't know anything about sales, okay? I, I didn't take sales classes when I was in school. Like, I, I, don't, I don't know anything about sales. I literally had some marketing, basically talking about how amazing my service was. And that was kind of it, okay? Now, all of this is all gonna be connected. So I'm just gonna present it in a way that hopefully makes sense. Okay, one of the things that you learn in sales is don't say bad things about your competition, okay? It just, it, there's not really a way to do it that makes you sound good, okay? It makes you sound butthurt, it honestly does. It makes you sound bitter and it makes you sound like you're just angry, that you're angry that someone else is having success and you're not having success, okay? That's how, it, that's how it makes you sound. With that in mind, I talk smack about my competition constantly, okay? And it worked brilliantly. And I'm gonna explain later on in this podcast why that's the case, okay? But anyway, the overwhelming majority of the clients that I got, just, they saw my marketing and they placed an order. They either, they either sent me a message and we, you know, talked about like which package they wanted to buy and they sent payment and then I would do the work. Or I set up a website at one point and they could just go there and choose the package that they wanted and, you know, just do it that way. Okay, that was the majority of my business. But sometimes people would message me and they have questions and they want to talk and they wanted to, which package should I buy, blah, blah, blah. What keywords do you think I should use, blah, blah, blah. And I, I don't mind helping people. I, I enjoyed answering those kind of questions. So anyway. I would, uh, I'd get a lot of messages like that. And sometimes people would wanna talk on the phone or they'd wanna talk on some, you know, internet messaging service, you know, like Skype. Uh, back in the day, a lot of people were using Skype. Hey, can we do a Skype call? And I'm gonna be 100% honest with you. I think the reason people wanted to do that, now, of course they wanted to ask questions, okay? Of course, but I think they just wanted to make sure that I was who I said I was. Uh, and And I'm not trying to be mean when I say this, but I think they wanted to make sure that I was actually a native English speaker. So if you know anything about the SEO industry, you might understand why they would wanna confirm that. But anyway, look, I don't care. Yeah, we can we can chat about SEO as long as you want. It's it's fun. It's literally what I'm doing for a living. So yeah, let's let's talk about it. It's all good. And I would say, of all of those phone calls and all of those emails and everything that wasn't somebody immediately just buying a service that I offer, I likely had a 90% close rate. Now, 90% close rate is pretty ridiculous. Like, I don't think most salespeople have a 90% close rate, okay? And again, I am a bad salesperson, okay? And I'm gonna talk about why I had a 90% close rate later on because I actually, I actually believe that I know the answer. I actually believe that I, that I have the answer to that question. So that was how I got most of my clients. Now, yes, of course I would get recommendations. One of the biggest clients, actually many of the biggest clients we've ever had came from recommendations and people that I'd never heard of would email me. Hey, I, I know so-and-so they recommended you. Do you want to, do you want to talk? Yeah, sure. Let's do it. Look at one point, just from this online marketplace, I had like a month long waiting list just for people to work with me. Okay. So like, it was awesome. I had no, I had no idea what I was doing at the time. Okay. No idea. I was just, oh yeah. Selling is easy. Look at this. I've just got my marketing up here. Oh my gosh. It was awesome. Okay. Now I want to tie this into the next thing. 
I had, and this is part of why I moved away from doing this and and kind of, I don't want to say pivoted, but and kind of pivoted into being a full service SEO agency. So on this marketplace, I was developing an exceptional reputation. Look, I always say that 99% of SEO consultants are scammers and liars, okay? Let me, I'm, and I'm gonna do another episode on this topic, okay? Because this is a very important topic. But for right now, I just wanna say, on this marketplace, for every one legitimate seller, and there were a couple, okay? It wasn't just me. There were a couple of legitimate sellers. There were dozens, if not hundreds, of liars and scammers and people ripping you off, taking your money, not doing anything. I did a whole episode on common SEO scams, so go listen to it if you wanna learn more. But here's the thing, on this marketplace, there was a separate discussion, okay? It was like, report any scammer activity here, okay? So if somebody, for example, if you bought something and you didn't get anything, if they ripped you off, if they took your money and didn't do anything, if the links that they gave you weren't the kind of links they said they were going to be, okay? You would report it in this other discussion, okay? That thread moved so quickly that the people that ran the website couldn't even keep up with it, okay? I I can't, Like, okay, so this is part of why I say that like 99% of SEO consultants are scammers because that's how it is. For every one person who's doing a good job, like I was, I was getting an exceptional reputation and I'm gonna talk about why this caused me to pivot into a full service SEO agency in a little bit. There were dozens, if not hundreds of scammers, people lying about the kind of backlinks they're providing, people lying about even providing backlinks in the first place. Imagine how you'd feel if you paid somebody and got nothing. Yeah, well, that happens all the time in SEO, okay? So, all the time. This thread moved so fast that the people that ran it couldn't even keep up with it. They were banning people left and right. It was ridiculous. Meanwhile, I am getting an exceptional reputation, okay? And I think... I'm trying to remember because this was a long time ago. I think it was like four years. Okay, it was like four years that I was actively doing this on this marketplace. I had glowing, glowing reviews from people who went from nowhere to the top of the search engines and remained at the top of the search engines for years, which again is the purpose of SEO. If you're not at the top of the search engines, your SEO agency is wasting your time and wasting your money. My clients were at the top of the search engines and they were staying there. They were becoming very successful as a result of the work that we had done. So anyway, years and years go by and I have my my thread where I'm selling my services is phenomenal. Like big name people are commenting and talking about how amazing I am and how incredible of results they're getting, okay? So anyway, it's all good. I'm happy. I'm totally content with this. Look, I'm not at this point, I'm not making tons of money, but I'm basically able to do what I want when I want. So it's pretty awesome. And ultimately, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't have a boss and I didn't have a job that I had to go to. So that was, that was pretty awesome. Anyways, I was, I was very, I was very happy with my life at the time. Okay. Let me tell you about why I pivoted into full service SEO. So one day I checked the marketplace and I find that my thread has been locked. And I'm like, wait a minute. By the way, if if this story sounds familiar, you probably are thinking of the correct marketplace, okay? <laughs> anyway, my thread was locked, okay? And I'm like, why did my thread get locked? The only people whose threads get locked are the scammers. I'm like, what? I literally had like a little freak out when this happened because this thread and my reputation had been my main source of income for the last four years, and now it was locked. So I'm like, literally what's happening right here? And long story short, the people that ran the marketplace decided that instead of letting threads continue indefinitely, they were only gonna let them last for 10 days. And then they were gonna charge you more money to make a new thread. And then in 10 days, you had to make a new thread. And then in 10 more days, you had to make another thread and so on. Look, 
that that didn't even bother me. Okay, I was getting so much business from this marketplace that I, I sure uh, you want you want to charge people money to keep the spammers out. I actually think that the spamming and the scammer problem got so bad that they had to charge people in order to get it to not be a problem anymore. Okay, because like like I've like I've said before in another episode, SEO has no barriers to entry. Any person in the world can say, oh, "I do SEO. Give me some money," right? So by charging people money to promote their services, the, the idea is that it might lower the amount of scammers, okay? So I didn't, I mean, it was annoying, but I didn't even care, okay? But this is why I cared. The reason I was so successful, and let me just say, there were a lot of copycats that were copying me. They were copying the terminology that I was using. They were copying all the stuff I was doing and trying to basically like steal some of my business, right? So my competition increased greatly. So do you know what I did? And again, I'm not recommending that you do this, but generally speaking, when competition increases, it drives prices down, right? If there's only one company that offers a thing, they can set the price however they want. But if there's four or five or whatever companies that offer the same thing, well, then they all have to reduce their prices. I said, no way, these other guys are scammers and I raised my prices, okay? I had no idea if that was even gonna work or not. Cause I'm just like, I don't know what I'm doing. This was like my second year. I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing, but I don't like all this competition. I'm just gonna raise my prices. And like my business increased. It was awesome. And when I say raise my prices, I mean like 70 or 80% increases. Like I drastically increased my prices, okay? And I got even more business. It was awesome. Anyway, so like two years after that, um, they decided they're going to charge people and you could only keep your sales thread open for 10 days and then you had to pay again. So the reason I pivoted into full service SEO was because the reason I was so successful was because of my reputation. Okay. I had years and years of positive feedback. Okay. It was amazing. And I'm not going to lie. I, th they were legit reviews. I was getting great quality results for nearly every client. Now there were some cases you know, when you don't get the results that you think you might. And usually, usually it's because they either have a penalty or it's because they don't have enough authority and they maybe don't have the budget to continue to increase their authority. Okay. That's a, that's a valid reason. I would say in 99% of the cases when we didn't get results, it was one of those two reasons. Okay. But anyways, I had amazing results, fantastic reputation, and all of a sudden it was gone. Okay, because when you have to start over with a brand new thread, well, nobody knows who you are. Here's this random person with their random thread with zero replies that just got created yesterday. How do we know this guy isn't some brand new scammer? Well, you don't. So my business dropped substantially. And I'm like, you know what? I'm done with this. So the next part of the story involves me moving to the West Coast. So I moved to the West Coast to a, a, a relatively let's call it a tech heavy city. Okay. And I joined a shared office space, which, you know, it's, I've, I've talked about that before. It's pretty awesome. I was basically surrounded by entrepreneurs and startups and just super smart, awesome people. It was really, really great. And I said, okay, here I am surrounded by business people, many of whom are founders and owners. I am going to get every single person here as an SEO client. Okay. Like that is totally not what happened, but like, that's what I was trying to do. Okay. So let me explain to you. And I promise you, we're still talking about sales. Let me explain to you the challenges I faced. Now here I was coming from basically let's call it online marketing. Okay. 90% close rate month long wait list just to work with me. Amazing reputation. I really felt that I knew what I was doing when it comes to sales. Again, I, I, I don't know anything about sales, but I was having such incredible success you know, breaking all the rules. Let me, let me share some more rules that I broke. Okay. Um, in sales and sales meetings, for example, you, you are supposed to talk depending on the sales method. You're supposed to talk anywhere from, you know, 30 to 40% of the time and the prospect or the client or whatever is supposed to talk, you know, 60 to 70% of the time. Okay. Not me. I was talking like 90% of the time. Okay. And I was having amazing success doing it. Okay. I didn't even know that was a rule. You're not supposed to say bad things about your competition, man. Let me tell you that was, that was my angle. Okay. 
My, my entire marketing was basically like this. We do it this way. Everyone else does it this other way. The way we do it is right and effective and the way everyone else does it won't work at all. Therefore, get your links from us, okay? Totally effective. I literally spent sales meetings on the phone with people explaining why everyone else was terrible and we were awesome. And they're like, yeah, sign me up. Okay, cool. Which, which package do you want? Oh yeah, we'll take the big one. It was, aw- it was awesome. It was awesome, okay? Like, I'm not kidding. It was awesome. So anyway, I tried to do all that stuff. Oh, and and here's another one. You're not supposed to give a prospect too much information, okay? Like you're not supposed, you can say you're not supposed to do unpaid consulting. Let's say that, okay? And I completely agree with that. But I used to, if somebody, look, if somebody sent me a message and they're like, I'm thinking about buying a package. I, I don't know what keywords to use. What keywords do you think I should use? I would look into it for them. I would look into their keywords. I'd find out what I thought were good choices. I would, I would, I didn't consider that unpaid consulting. I consider that demonstrating knowledge. Okay. Because to me, having a lot of knowledge and being able to prove that you have so much knowledge is a beneficial thing. Okay. A, a lot of people don't see it that way. Okay. But to me, yeah, it was, it, that made sense. That was, that was me demonstrating my value in an industry full of liars. Okay. So yeah, no problem. I, I don't, I don't mind, you know, I don't mind doing some keyword research for you before we start working together. All right. It's, that's fine. Now, to be fair, what I just said about, I don't mind doing keyword research for you before we start working together. That only applies to clients that I get from the marketplace. Okay. As you will learn when I tried to do that in real life, in like in actual sales meetings with founders and CEOs, it never worked. I never got that person to become a client. But when I did it in the marketplace, I almost always got that person to be a client. As I would come to learn though, you aren't really supposed to do it that way. And again, at the end of this podcast, I'm going to explain to you why I think I was able to be so successful violating that rule as well as many other rules, some of which I just talked about. So. I get to this shared office space and I meet a ton of cool people. So I'm like, I'm going to give SEO to all these people and it's going to be cool. Okay. So, um, (laughs) anyway, like it didn't happen at all. Like I had, I actually, when I first got there, I got tons of meetings. Okay. I got tons of meetings and I was doing everything exactly the same way I did it before when I was getting my clients online. And I'm not joking. I literally think I went a full year without getting any new business from face-to-face sales meetings. Now, I mean, I had like long-term clients that were, you know, paying their invoices every month. So I I didn't really care that I wasn't getting any new business, but still like literally I went like a year making like zero sales. I I may have, I may have made one, like I don't have a timeframe right now, but I'm, I know for sure. I think, I think I actually did get one client during this time. Uh, super cool guy who was, uh, he, he needed to rank for his own name. So that was, that was an interesting, an interesting project. And by the way, he got to the top and stayed at the top for years while he was working with us. So anyway, um, but look in like in a year, I got like one or like zero clients, um, from like face to face sales. It was, it was pretty terrible. Everybody seemed, you know, appreciative of the information, but I don't know, man, nobody wanted to, nobody, nobody wanted to sign on the dotted line. So I'm like, all right, I'm, I'm not, I I couldn't, I couldn't figure out what the problem was because I knew that I knew SEO better than anyone these people would talk to. And I I knew that I could get them, like not everybody, but most of them, I knew that I could get them results. Okay. And I'll tell you, if I don't think I can get you results, I'll be like, I don't think it's a good idea for us to work together, but that like rarely happens. So I, uh, I couldn't figure it out. Like, honestly, I could not figure out why I was not making any sales. So anyway, uh, I mentioned on another episode, that I had a sales coach. So I started working with the sales coach and let me, let me give you the short version. So look, a lot of people will go to a seminar and you know, they, it's like, it's like, you know, it's, it's like a day or two and then they forget everything. Like, no. Okay. The, the sales classes that I took, they were multiple times per week. And that was just like the lessons. And then multiple times per week, there was role-playing. So you use what you learn and you remember it. Okay. And I did this for years. Okay. I know the sales system. Okay. I could teach it. I could explain all the psychology. I could explain why you do everything and why you don't do everything. And they say this and you say that. And like all, all the things I know all the things. Okay. And like the more I learned, 
the worse I did. And I'm just like, why is this happening? I couldn't, I couldn't figure it out. And like, I, I actually, okay, I actually did, I did figure it out and I'm gonna explain. I'm almost at that point where I explained to you what the problem was and why I couldn't make sales. But it was like, I practiced, I practiced so hard. And I like, I literally memorized this whole thing, this whole thing. And look, yes, in the beginning, you know, when you're memorizing a new thing, it might sound kind of weird. Cause like you just memorize something and you haven't like, you haven't like internalized it yet. Right. So sometimes you can sound a little robotic or like you're reading from a script. Yeah. Look, that happens to everyone. That's not the point. Okay. I understand the theory. I understand the concepts. I can make it sound as natural as you want. Okay. Just like this podcast. Look, this podcast isn't scripted. It's not rehearsed. I'm literally just doing the, like, sometimes I'll record something over again, but I'm just, I'm just talking to you. Okay. The same way I would talk to anybody. Um, and I can do that because I understand SEO so well that I just, I just know it and I can just tell you the things, okay? Because I've done it countless times at presentations and seminars and with clients and with prospects and with like other SEO people and, and everything. So I would like to believe that I appear natural when I'm giving a podcast. Hopefully I do. I don't know. But anyways, look, the point is I understood the sales system, okay? I understood it. And I still, I was still doing so poorly in sales meetings. I was doing so poorly. Okay. Let me tell you why there's two reasons that I was extremely successful when I started and became less and less successful as I moved into face-to-face -face sales and full service SEO. Okay. The first reason is this, when I, when I started, I was mostly selling, not all the time, but I was mostly selling to people who sort of understood SEO. They knew, okay, look, if, if your boss or whatever, tells you, hey, you're in charge of SEO for this project. What are you gonna do? If you live in if you live in like a tech city, you probably know of some SEO agencies. You know, if not, you're probably gonna go online and you're gonna search for like SEO agencies or something like that, right? Like you like you don't know anything. You're just like, oh I'm gonna do the SEO. Okay. Okay. Nobody goes to an basically what is an internet marketing marketplace and specifically digs into the site to find the SEO vendors. Like, do you know what I mean? Like that's a very specific thing that people who understand SEO would do. So what does that mean? That means nearly every client I had already understood SEO. They understood that they needed backlinks and they understood why they needed certain kinds of backlinks. So that's why when I was saying things like, oh yeah, our links are like this and everyone else's is like this, you know, you don't wanna buy those scammy things, et cetera. That's why it was successful because they knew, yes, that is the kind of backlink that I need. These other people are scammers. This agency is offering exactly what I need, okay? That's why I made so many sales. That's why people were literally waiting a month to even begin working with me, okay? Because they knew what they were doing. They were SEO competent people, okay? That's reason number one. Now, when I got to my shared office space and I was doing it in person, there were very few people who understood SEO, okay? I'm talking, I was working with people with entrepreneurs and founders and C-level executives, okay? And people who like, they knew that SEO was a thing, but they, they're like, yeah, okay. And the more technical and specific and precise you get with them, the less they're interested, okay? So when I'm in these meetings and I'm like, yeah, and we're the best because blah, 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 and other people do it this way. And look, SEO is all about authority and link juice and our links are this and everybody else. They're like, uh, okay, you know, sure. And then they were like, well, you sound really smart, but we're not gonna work with you. So, <laughs> okay. And then actually, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna leave it at that. Like it was a different, I was selling to a different type of person. That's reason number one. Here's reason number two. I 100% think this is the biggest, re like, okay. <laughs> this is like the biggest, the biggest piece of advice like I can give you, I think when it comes to selling just in general. And look, I might be, th this might not even be correct, but this makes complete 100% perfect sense to me based on what I've experienced in my life. So let me tell you what it is. I need to, I need to tell you that for almost my entire life, and I wanna say, I'm not saying this is true, but in my foundational beliefs of how everything works, I believed this to be true, okay? And that is this, salespeople are liars, Salespeople's job is to get you to buy stuff you don't need and they lie to you just to make commission. Now, you may have experienced some salespeople like that in your life. I mean, maybe, maybe you haven't, but that was 
honestly, that was how I thought about salespeople, okay? So, and, and regardless of why I have those beliefs, I had those beliefs and they were very, very powerful beliefs, okay? So why is that a problem? The more sales I learned, the more I practiced, the more I went to role-playing classes, the more I, I got into meetings and went through the system and did everything the way I was supposed to do, I felt like I was being a gross salesperson, okay? Even though I was saying everything exactly right, okay? Even though I understood the method perfectly, even though everything, I, I was textbook perfect, okay? I mean, probably not perfect, but pretty good. Inside, I felt like I was being a salesperson, which made me feel like I was being a liar and not trustworthy and deceitful and every other bad thing that you might think about salespeople. So anyway, let me, let me run one more concept by you really quickly. So there's something called congruence, okay? What is congruent? And this is, this is like in a, in a social or in a psychological standpoint, okay? What is congruence? Congruence is when your actions are aligned with what you think about yourself. Now, let me give you an example. Think back to high school, maybe middle school, whatever. Did you ever see any kids that were called posers or sometimes you know the word sometimes they're called tryhards or a wannabe okay sometimes they're called wannabes but it's like same thing okay what is a poser a poser is somebody who tries really hard to do what all the cool kids do but isn't cool okay so maybe he gets a cool haircut maybe he gets the cool clothes like whatever whatever clothes the cool kids are wearing the poser buys all those cool clothes right but He's still not cool. So here you have somebody who's trying to do all the cool kid things, but he's not actually cool. It's, it's not working for him, okay? They call that a poser. I think that's a little bit easier to understand than, you know, congruence, but like, it's literally the same thing. So anyway, you have somebody who is, you know, he's got the cool kid haircut and he's got all the cool kid clothes, but he's not cool. And so people see him trying to be one thing, but... He's not succeeding at it. Why? Because inside, he doesn't actually believe that he's a cool kid, okay? So even though he's doing everything that a cool kid is supposed to do, you know, however you want to take that, he's not cool. And people can feel that. They can feel the lack of congruence between what he thinks about himself and how he presents himself. They can feel it. That feeling is gross. That feeling is a lack of congruence. And that is the reason nobody likes him and he's not a cool kid. What these people are feeling is the difference in the poser's mind between what he's trying to be and what he thinks about himself. It's an almost tangible sensation that you get when somebody is acting like that and nobody likes it, okay? That's why posers are not cool. And that's why I was not successful when I was trying to be a salesman. And just to be totally clear about that, I'm not saying that if you think of yourself as a salesman, you're not going to be successful, okay? Like, you might actually be. The reason here is because I had such a bad opinion of salespeople that when I was trying to be a salesperson, I thought bad things about myself. And I thought, deep down inside, I thought, why, why am I doing this? This is gross. I'm just one of these scammy salespeople. Even though I know I'm not a scammer, I know that we literally offer the best SEO service of anyone these people are ever going to talk to. I know we're not a scammy agency, okay? But because I was trying to be a salesperson and I didn't have a good opinion of salespeople, that was the impression that I gave off, that I was gross and there's something wrong with me and they could feel that I was not truthfully being who I was presenting myself to be. Okay, it's like watching bad acting. And by the way, that's the reason it's so awkward to watch bad acting because what the person is doing doesn't match what they're trying to present. So, I, I mean, that hopefully makes sense. So, go back to me in my sales meetings. I was doing all the things, okay? But I believed so strongly that salespeople by default are, are liars and scammers that I felt it was this like internal strife between like what I was trying to present myself as and what I actually saw myself as. And I'm almost entirely positive that every single person I met with could feel that. And they're like, something is wrong. I don't want to work with this guy. 
Okay, so to the best of my knowledge, that's the reason. And let me just tell you one more story because near the end of my time at the co-working space, I decided to test that theory. So I had a sales meeting set up and I said, you know what? I'm not going to do any of this new stuff that I've been learning and studying for years. I'm literally going to go in there and I'm going to be totally congruent with who I think I am and how I feel. I'm going to do whatever I want. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to trash my competition. I'm going to talk about how amazing we are. And I'm probably going to talk most of the time. I'm literally going to break every sales rule and I don't care. So I went in there, said whatever I wanted to. Now, to be fair, I probably incorporated a few things from the the sales strategy that I had learned. I mean, it, it, it's it's pretty good actually. I'm not going to lie. There was some good. There was some good. Uh, some good components to it. Okay. But ultimately, I probably talked 70 or 80% of the time, okay? Blah, 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 blah. Let me tell you why I'm so awesome and why we're so good. And this is how SEO works and link juice this and authority and blah, 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 right? And I talk smack about all my competition. Oh my gosh. I'm like, look, you could work with these other people, but you know, if they're even building you backlinks and they're probably not, you know, they're going to be low quality and this is why, and this is the way my agency does it. And this is why it works and all the things, right? And so like, anyway, I basically, I just, I just said whatever I felt like saying, and I'm like, you know, this, this sales method, this pristine sales method isn't working for me. I'm just going to do it however I want. I went in there, talked about myself the whole time, bragged about how great my agency is. You know what? He became a client. So, I mean, <laughs> again, I literally broke every sales rule that I knew of, but I honestly think that it, it fit. The guy probably was like, this guy seems smart. He knows what he's talking about. I'm not detecting any weirdness from him. He's not, he's not trying to be something he's not. And I honestly think that's why it went the way it was supposed to. Now, to be fair, because I want to be fair and I want to be honest with everybody. He did have kind of a tech background, so he kind of understood SEO. So, you know, maybe it was kind of similar to back in the early days of when I was, you know, selling to people who got SEO and, and, and I didn't have to explain to them how things worked. So, you know, I, I mean, I mean, that could have been part of it, but look, ever since then, I just, I just do whatever I want in meetings and it goes so much better. It goes so much better because I'm being, I, I'm being an authentic version of myself. Okay. So like, I, I don't know, this probably isn't even good sales advice. Like literally don't, don't do anything that I tell you, right? Don't, don't, don't talk for most of the meeting. Okay. Because that's like bad form. Don't, you know, uh, I, I don't know. Don't say bad things about your competition. You know, don't like brag about how amazing you are. Like you're not supposed to do any of those things, but I, I don't know, man, I did them and they, they were all just like super effective. But so, but anyway, I think, I think my point is that people can feel discomfort like from within another person. And if you, if you're trying to be a salesman, but you have a low opinion of salespeople, people are going to feel that it's going to, it's going to, it's going to, seem wrong to them. Like something's going to feel off. Like their spidey sense is going to be tingling. And I don't think they're going to turn into customers, but I don't know, I guess maybe you can break every sales rule as long as you're congruent with everything and like not even have any problem at all. Like I said, I was super successful at it for years. And then I like tried to learn sales. Right. And like, trust me, I learned it. Okay. But I didn't really have much success with it. And I like, I want, I want to just say this again. Like I truthfully have been thinking about this for years, like why this was the case. Cause that used to annoy me. And I used to talk to, I would talk to my, I would talk to my sales coach about it. And I talked to people in the, in the training with me and like, we'd be practicing together and like, yeah. And I'm just like, I can't, I can't figure it out. I can't figure it out. And then like, it hit me one day. I'm just like, wait a minute. I was completely being incongruent with how I see myself. And I, I, feel like I was just being a gross salesperson. I'm like, of course, nobody wanted to buy from me when I was doing that. That makes, that makes perfect sense. It makes perfect sense. I hope it makes sense to you when you're listening to this. Anyway, we might do another episode in the future about how to sell SEO. Cause I mean, I can share some stuff that works. I think, let me, let me say this, but selling and doing are very different. So I just want to clarify you can be the best at something in the world and not be successful at it. If you don't have any customers. Okay. Conversely, you can have a ton of clients and be terrible at something just because you're a good salesperson or because your agency has good salespeople, okay? I've said this before. There are many, many SEO agencies that have superb 
salespeople, okay? But they cannot keep a client. Do you know why they can't keep a client? It's because they can't get results, okay? Amazing household name clients, okay? Super smooth salespeople, very successful agencies, cannot keep a client. You wanna know what? We have a lot of clients that we have gotten from agencies like that because they can't keep them. They come work with us. We fix all the bad stuff that the other agency did. If they even did anything at all, go back and listen to the scams episode. And then we get them to the top of the search engines. So, all right. So before we wrap things up, let me give you just two actionable pieces of advice from things that we talked about in this episode that will improve your SEO sales. Number one, know as much as possible about SEO. Why? Well, couple reasons. The main reason is because you need to demonstrate your understanding to the prospect, okay? Because you're not going to be the only person that they're talking to, okay? They're going to be talking to other agencies or other consultants that they're thinking of working with instead of you. You need to show them that you understand SEO, okay? Now, personally, take from this what you will. I try to sound relaxed and very confident. So let me say here, because I know somebody's going to ask, well, how do I sound relaxed and confident? If I'm supposed to sound relaxed and confident, how do I sound relaxed and confident? Okay, that's a great question. My answer is basically this. One, you'll know it when you do it, okay? Because it'll just be like, so you'll be sitting in a sales meeting and instead of feeling like you're trying, you'll just be doing. I know that doesn't help if you haven't experienced it, but trust me, because when you experience it, you'll get it, okay? Number two, how do you actually get to that point? I would say one, understand everything. Now, in the very beginning, okay, a long time ago, I still knew SEO, but I didn't understand it as confidently as I do now. So I would be in a meeting, for example, and somebody would ask a question, and when I'm replying to the question, I'd be like, I hope I'm explaining this in a way that makes sense, Because even though I knew the stuff, I didn't, like, I wasn't confident in my ability of knowing it. Like now, when somebody asks me a question, I'm just like, oh yeah, blah, 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 works like blah, 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 whatever. Does that make sense? And then if they have follow-up questions, yeah, I can explain the answers to the follow-up questions in a way that builds off of what I just explained the first time. Because I've been doing it for years, okay? So, okay, this next thing I'm going to tell you. Like this is this is literally my advice, okay? I'm I'm I I literally do this. I literally do this. I'm not kidding. Like obviously study the stuff, practice, like know it, okay? And then just like have like pretend conversations, okay? Like, are you going for a walk? Okay, like around, maybe you're going for a walk around your neighborhood. Explain SEO while you're out on the walk. Like you're enjoying your time outside. It's good for your fitness. It's good for your health. Have a conversation, have a fake meeting with somebody. I don't even mean like call your friend. Like literally give yourself a time limit. Take 30 seconds, take five minutes, take 10 minutes. Change it up, obviously. Explain SEO. How does SEO work? You're in a meeting with a prospect and they ask you, well, how how does it work? Like, we're, we're not at the top of the search engines now. Like, what what are you actually gonna do to get us like how do how does how does the search engines even know which websites to put at the top of the results? Can you answer that question in 30 seconds? Okay. Could you answer that question in five minutes? Could you answer that question in 10 minutes? If you completely understand it, the answer to all of those is yes. I could answer that question in 30 seconds. I could answer that question in five minutes. I could answer that question in 10 minutes. And you know what? The person I'm talking to would leave the meeting and be like, whoa, I get it now. That's awesome. Okay. But you got to practice to be able to get there. So like practice, like literally in the shower. Do you take showers? I hope you take showers. Practice Practice, review SEO concepts in the shower. Pretend that you're in a meeting or explaining it to somebody or whatever, like literally practice it. That, that's, that's the best way I can do it. When you do it, when you understand it and it has become automatic for you, it won't even be an issue anymore. You'll, you'll have plenty of success because you will know it so well. That's how you get to being relaxed and confident. Let me put it this way. In every sales meeting I've ever had, let's say in the last 12 years, okay? I've been doing this for 14 years. Let's say the last 12 years, okay? My sticking point has not been an understanding of SEO, okay? Yeah, sales meetings can be hard. There's some uncomfortable things you have to talk about, some or some things that are uncomfortable for some people to talk about. We'll maybe talk a little bit more about that later. In the last 12 years, I've never had somebody ask me a question that I didn't know the answer to or could find the answer very quickly, you know? 
even if they did, okay, I'm pretty certain, and I, look, I might be wrong, okay, but I'm pretty certain that it's very apparent from how I answer questions, the, the precision in my answers, the, the relaxed nature of how I am when I'm talking about SEO, it's pretty obvious that I know what I'm talking about, okay? I've literally done this for 14 years, okay? Like, I understand SEO. Like, understanding SEO is not my challenge in a sales meeting, okay? But you need to try to get to that point. Now, to be totally fair, you're listening to this podcast, I'm certain that you will get to that point because if you listen to this podcast, you will know more about SEO than 99% of people on the planet. And that 1% of people who's left over is probably not the people that you're competing with to get clients. So don't worry, as long as you listen to this podcast, I'm pretty sure that that won't be an issue for you. Okay, thing number two. I know I kind of talked about this a bit at the end, but I wanna make sure that this that this concept is very clear, okay? If you're doing something, for example, using a sales system and it makes you feel uncomfortable or awkward, either stop or really take a look at why, okay? To reiterate, the reason that I struggled in sales meetings while using this new sales system that I had been learning was because I felt awkward doing it. The system wasn't the problem. Look, some, okay, so some sales methods are pushy. Some sales methods are manipulative, right? Like, you know what I'm talking about. This wasn't any of those, okay? It wasn't like a bad thing. It just, it didn't resonate with how I see myself, okay? So for example, some of the some of the questions that I was learning that you're supposed to ask, some of the things that you're supposed to say, I kept thinking to myself, I would never say that to somebody. Like, it's it just, I would never say that to someone in real life. Like, that's just, and so, and again, it's not, it's not like they were personal questions. It's not like it was, you know, manipulative or pushy or bad or anything. It was just, it was just different, so different from how I am as a person that, I couldn't do it and feel like I was being authentic. No matter how much I practiced years of taking classes and role playing and literally using the sales method in sales meetings, okay? And I still felt so awkward. Now, you got to understand about me. Like if I'm trying to learn something, I will just like I will just study like I will just study it harder than anyone else, okay? So like if I'm if I'm struggling with like a sales system, I'm like, well, the the problem isn't the sales system. The problem is me. I'm just going to study it harder. I'm just going to practice more, right? But it was so fundamentally different from how I see myself that I just couldn't make it work, okay? Now, again, it wasn't a bad sales system. It was a very good sales system. And I don't doubt that somebody else could be very effective selling SEO with it, but I couldn't. Now, did I incorporate bits of it into my sales practices? Of course I did. For example, one thing that people find often very uncomfortable in a sales meeting is talking about money or how much something's gonna cost or how much they're going to charge the person if they buy from them, okay? Some people really do not like talking about money. It can be very uncomfortable for them. So for example, the sales system that I learned has a very frictionless way of bringing up the topic of money and not making it uncomfortable for everybody involved, which it often can be. I like that very much and I utilize aspects of that in my selling, but I'm not word for word following the script or anything just because it just, it's, it's nothing that I would ever do. Okay, so why is that a problem? When I was trying to do something that I would never do in real life, I say real life, but like, you know what I mean? Like when I was asking certain questions and saying certain things and leading the conversation in a certain direction that I would never do, like normally, I felt uncomfortable, okay? And so what happened? The prospect picked up on the fact that I felt uncomfortable and they felt uncomfortable, okay? So there was, there was just some some friction that they were feeling in the entire process because here they are talking to this guy who is obviously super smart when it comes to SEO. Like I literally had people say to me at the end of sales meetings, like you are the most knowledgeable person that I've ever talked to about SEO, et cetera, like blah, 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 things like that. Like 
And just to be clear, I'm very grateful and I'm very appreciative every time I hear that because that makes me feel good. It makes me feel like I'm helping the person. That That is a regular occurrence for me, okay? Somebody's like, holy cow, I have literally never met somebody who knows as much or has as much experience as you do. Like, thank you. Like, seriously, thank you for explaining things because I actually understand how it works now, okay? I, I hear that. I hear that so often that I'm just like, I'm not even surprised by it anymore. And I'm not, I'm not... I'm not like bragging. Okay. I'm not like being elitist, but I, I just, I literally hear that all the time. So it's like, I'm very confident in my ability to understand and, and explain SEO in a way that people will understand. Okay. But I was just being awkward and weird because I was trying to use a sales system that didn't resonate with me and they could feel that. And so no matter how smart I was, no matter how good I was, no matter how amazing my independently verified by a third party track record was, no matter all the amazing case studies that I could bring to the table, there was something weird about the interaction. And that weirdness was caused entirely by me feeling inauthentic by how I was acting. It's the best way I can describe it. I really, really hope this concept makes sense. Like, honestly, I hope this makes sense um, because I think if you understand it, it will literally revolutionize your selling. But again, for some of you, you're probably like, yeah, duh, that's the most like obvious advice ever. Don't do something that makes you feel awkward. <laughs> but you know what? I'm just mentioning it because I guarantee you there's other people that have similar feelings that are very good at a thing. And then they try to learn how to sell that thing and they just they just can't do it. They just can't do it. And it's because they feel awkward and they feel weird and they feel like a little robot. And like, that's the reason. So anyway, yes, I've incorporated numerous aspects from the selling system into my sales and it works very well, but I'm also being myself. And as I mentioned, I'm breaking so many sales rules right now and I'm not recommending that you do the same. Okay. Like, I feel like, you know, the saying, like when you know the rules, you can break the rules. Like, Actually, I don't, I don't even think that, I don't even think that applies right here, but, <laughs> um, I'm just saying like, I just, the reason I think that I make sales now when I'm in sales meetings is because I'm so confident and I'm just so relaxed and I truthfully enjoy talking about SEO with people. And it's just, I, I know, I know what I'm talking about and I'm not, I'm not being weird anymore. I'm not being, I'm not being weird and asking people questions where I feel awkward asking the questions and then I feel awkward hearing their responses. And then I feel awkward because I'm so outside my element because I've just asked all these questions that I would literally never ask anyone ever. And I don't know what to do, even though I've memorized what to do, it still doesn't, it doesn't resonate with me and it feels weird. That was the reason that I was not having success. When I stopped doing those things, I started having success again, which again, sounds obvious. But I just wanted to mention those things because I think they're absolutely important in doing well with sales. I hope this was useful. I hope you learned something cool. And uh, let me know if you have any comments about sales in general or about SEO sales. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to subscribe. I hope this episode was helpful. And if you have any questions or if there's anything that you want me to talk about on a future episode, you can email me at hello at grumpyseoguy.com. And I'll talk to you later. You're listening to Grumpy SEO Guy, the SEO podcast that doesn't waste your time with nonsense that doesn't work. Join us next Wednesday when we talk about why most SEO agencies cannot keep a client.